When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth, and there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Ninety-three million miles from Earth, the surface of the sun pumps out vast amounts of heat and light into space. Occasionally, huge explosions throw out much more than this. These are solar storms. When these storms hit Earth, they have little effect on living things. But the vast global network that supports our lives can act as a conductor, channeling the destructive energy of the storm and knocking out all electrical power. New York, like the rest of the world, takes technology for granted. Its lifeblood is electricity, and it uses vast amounts of it. Two or three days without it is a nuisance, but months or years is unthinkable. The loss of power in a massive scale thrusts us back to an era before technology, at a time when we're entirely dependent on it. The global economy, health systems, communications, and essentials like light and heat would all collapse if, as scientists predict, the Earth is hit by the perfect solar storm. But this is only a warning of what is to come. Solar storms are nothing new. Several hit Earth every year. Most are completely harmless, bringing us the northern and southern lights. But our increasing reliance on technology makes us more susceptible to the damage the big ones can cause. In most natural disasters, it's usually the less developed areas that suffer the biggest impacts. There's a big irony with space weather or geomagnetic storms. It's our sophisticated technology systems that has created this big antenna that couples so well uh, to the space environment and ends up being our undoing. In 1989, this weakness became painfully evident when the people of Quebec, Canada were hit by a solar storm. They went from normal operating conditions to complete blackout of six million people in about 90 seconds. The storm only affected the far north. When the power went out, the accidents increased. With no light and no heat and temperatures just above freezing, Quebec was lucky it only lasted nine hours. If the right conditions were to align, the perfect storm will be three times as powerful. This smoldering wreckage is the result of a chain of events that started during a period of increased activity on the surface of the sun, called the solar maximum. Looking at the perfect solar storm, we have to start with the right conditions. Uh, the sun is a magnetic variable star. It goes through a 22-year magnetic cycle with intense sunspots being strongest every 11 years. During the solar cycle maximum, there's a much larger chance for there being massive solar storms. The Earth has been under bombardment from the sun for over a week now. The upper atmosphere has become so electrically charged that anything orbiting above it is in danger. 
this swelling, this heating of the Earth's atmosphere takes place at all longitudes at the same time as these currents circle the Earth. So satellite orbits, all of them, all satellites that are in low Earth orbit can be impacted by this solar storm. The atmosphere is now so swollen that it rises into the path of satellites, upsetting their orbit and causing them to rocket back to Earth. The people monitoring the sun are from NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. At their Space Environment Center in Colorado, they have been keeping a watch out for unusual space weather since 1965. The moment they spot trouble, they issue warnings to everyone from satellite operators to the military. High on the priority list for space weather warnings are local power stations. All on level one for station supervisor. Tara Bradshaw, systems control. Hey, Tara, it's Peter. Peter, thank God. I just got something from NOAA. There's been a nasty solar storm, and there's more heading in our direction. Yeah, I've been trying to get through to you for the past half hour. It's probably the reason why the cell phone networks are acting up. Listen, it was a satellite that blew out the power here. Do you have any more information on the storm? Uh, nothing specific, but reading between the lines, I'd say NOAA's excited about something. An unusually strong storm on the sun has begun to affect life on Earth. Normal solar activity is rarely felt, as the Earth protects us with its own magnetic field, the magnetosphere. But this has a limit. During one of these strong magnetic storms, that hammer-like blast strips part of the Earth's magnetic field back, compresses it, leaving us very little remaining shield. The right conditions are coming together for a perfect solar storm. First, the week-long bombardment due to the solar maximum has left our protective shield highly vulnerable. Now, a sunspot bigger than Jupiter erupts on the sun's surface, unleashing a billion-ton electrified gas cloud, a coronal mass ejection, or CME. This is the big one, and it is heading for Earth. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. 